Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Claire. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to grow and start your YouTube channel. Whether you have 10 subscribers, 100 subscribers, or 1,000 subscribers, these tips will definitely be helpful to you. So keep on watching. So in the first place, you're like, why do I want to start a channel? Well, if you're anything like me, I used to sit and watch YouTube forever. I was always like, why don't I just start a channel? And then I did, and now we're here. So it's a great like hobby if you like filming, if you like talking to cameras. But also, if you want to make a side hustle, one thing is people are always like, don't do it for the money. Yes and no. Don't make that your one goal because trust me, you won't make money for like at least a year. And secondly, you can keep in mind that this could be a source of income. Just don't rely on it. It's also just like any job where you put in a lot of hard work and you will get repaid for that. Hey. Okay, so you start your channel. You have a nice profile pic, a nice... YouTube banner, a nice name, whatever. Now you're gonna have to start filming videos. So, iPhones and Androids or whatever you use, camera quality nowadays is so good. I'm currently filming, oh, don't you love my shirt, I know. Anyways, I'm currently filming on the Canon G7X, which you can see my unboxing and you can see reviews on, it's really good. I got this as an investment because I like taking videos and taking photos. But if you're just starting off, I would definitely try using your phone. This is one of the newest phones, the iPhone 12. And let me just say the quality is so good. I think filming on anything over like an iPhone 6 is pretty good quality. I'll show you guys a couple tests. Okay, so this is on the iPhone 12 mini. And honestly, the quality is really good. You guys can see yourself there. There we go. Nice, nice room tour. And now I'm filling on the Canon G7X, and you can see me right there. And you can tell the sound quality is a little bit better. There we go. Nice, nice room tour. But honestly, the focusing on iPhone is super good. So whatever you want, I just recommend waiting until you know that YouTube or filming videos is your passion to purchase something big. Now that you know what to film on, next step is how to film. Honestly, that can be so basic. It can come easy to people, some not as much. Awkwardness on camera is so usual for your first 10, 20, 30, 50 videos. Trust me, if you look back at my videos, you can tell that I'm still so awkward. It's not, just remember, it's not usual for someone to talk to a camera. Just think of it as that voice in your head that like when you're walking around and you're pretending that you are making the YouTube video, just say that out loud. And that's what a YouTube video is. Also, make sure your camera is steady and not like that. It just, something with the human brain or eyes don't like it. That's not always inve inevitable. My old camera was really big and really shaky, but the Canon G7 X and iPhones do like really good for that. And finally, I'll talk about this in editing, but don't ramble on and on and on about things that nobody else will probably find interesting. Sorry, that's the cold hard truth. Now, Let's talk about editing. Here's a random thing, but it's kind of awkward, but I always pose during the video to take the thumbnail so I don't forget. Here's just an example of me. It's really awkward most of the time. I currently use an Apple computer, and what I'm going to show you will only work on Apple. But there are awesome editing apps on other software. Let's go watch some YouTube videos about that because I don't know that much about that. So the obvious one to use is iMovie. Like, that's what I use starting off. And then I came across something. You can get a free trial of Final Cut Pro, which is like the advanced Apple software, you can get free for 90 days. So I got that, oh my God, guys, it is so much easier to edit. You can easily add text, transitions, there are some cool things. So I would definitely try checking that out. If you reset your calendar, then you can just have it for another 90 days. Technically, it's just like me on other accounts because I got on my other computer. So uh, let me quickly show you a cool things that you can do on Final Cut Pro. Okay, it has most of the basics that iMovie has, but then there's these cool things like transitions, which there's a lot more options to choose from than on iMovie. And then there's effects, which is one of the coolest things. You can get different things like um, filters on it or distortions. So you can put this fisheye filter on it, which you'll see. 
It just makes life a lot easier when you're trying to add cool effects that popular YouTubers use. And then the best thing is this little text box where you can just add plain text because if you know on iMovie it like moves around and stuff. So I'll link down a like Final Cut Pro tutorial down below that helped me. Okay, now that I've told you about Final Cut Pro, let's talk a little bit more about editing, which I would say is probably the most important step. You could have an amazing video, but if you don't edit it right, people aren't gonna watch the video. This is basic, but if you don't know it, take out pauses take out that breath and I actually kind of like it when it's like choppy and it's really quick so like hey whoa um but it's just your preference maybe it's a slow video maybe you want to keep in those pauses just know that people don't want to listen to like that and then what I always do is put in headphones while I watch it the final time and make sure all the audio is good because you can definitely tell when somebody's new to YouTube and all the audio is at different levels and it really does not make for a sophisticated video. So yeah, also watch it through because you'll always notice some mistake and if you get bored, change the thing where it gets boring. That was not a smooth transition. Also these plants they're for a project. This is an awkward angle. I feel like we're having dinner. Now, you've filmed it, you've edited it. Edited it. I hate that. Mm. And the third and almost final step is uploading it. Probably the most important because you wouldn't have gotten your video up if you haven't uploaded it. First thing, have an upload schedule. Thinking of that, or speaking of that, I post every Monday and Friday at 12 p.m. And I try to do that because YouTube's algorithm recognizes that and it can count on you for posting that certain time at that certain day and it will boost your video more. I don't know if that makes sense or if YouTube gods just like came up with something that no one understands. Try and post at least once a week, but if you can't do that, then just get a good quality video and come out with like every two weeks or something. I'm literally going to change this angle. Ugh, I hit it. Don't mind my plant. I'm actually so proud of it. I kept these alive for so long. Okay, if you're going to take one thing from this video, listen to this step. Tags. So if you don't know what that is, go into YouTube Studio and you will see on your video a little section that says tag. That is where you will put all things related to your video. So say I'm doing a morning routine video. I'm going to put into that tags box morning routine. Uh, summer morning routine. If it's a back to school one, back to school morning routine. Routine for middle schoolers, routine for high schoolers. All of those things, put those in. It may not seem worth it at first, but I've tried uploading a video without tags and it did not do as well as my others. Basically, YouTube sees that and so when anyone ever searches up that term, your video will come up. And if you get the TubeBuddy extension, you can get recommended tags. It helps you with SEO. Look up some videos about that. It's too complicated for me to explain. Now here are some random but very important tips. Thumbnails. You always want to have a good thumbnail. If you don't like it, change something because trust me it gets the clicks on your video which gets you views and watch time going on that point you can kind of see that I've been experimenting with different thumbnails because I've been changing up my style but once I try and do find my style I'm gonna try and keep it the same because though say a person is watching YouTube and sees my morning routine video look at the thumbnail they really like that video uh, but they don't subscribe because they haven't seen other videos from me the next day they're looking at their YouTube recommendation page and they see a video by me and they can recognize because it's the same thumbnail type font or drawing on it they click on it and they're like wait i've like two videos from this person i'm gonna subscribe that was a very long explanation of just try it and have your thumbnails have a cohesive theme about it next check your analytics whoa check your analytics it's gonna tell you your watch time your clicks per view and stuff like hey show! wow that was loud i would also recommend watching some analytics video because it actually gives you helpful things on what your fan base i don't know what your watchers like to watch and this is another great tip from me sub for sub do not do that i was always told oh don't do sub for sub real quick the reason you don't do that is because they're just subscribing and subscribers are not the important part the important part is getting watch time so this sub for sub thing we're not watching each other's videos you're just having you're having a lot of subscribers but hardly any watch time which you need to get monetized but there's people who do like do you, they are smart. 
they're like, hey, I'm a small YouTuber. Want to support each other? Now, I'm not saying don't support them. Go check out their channel. If you like their content, if you like their videos, think they put a lot of time in it, it inspires you, and you think their channel is really good quality, then be like, yeah, I would love to be YouTuber buddies. I found some YouTuber buddies like that. It's fun having friends on YouTube. But if their channel is not what you like, then just don't subscribe. You don't want to be stuck with people who aren't inspiring you. And that happened to me a lot. I was like, why are these people getting all these views and stuff? I think my views are better. That's just not a good mindset to be in. And finally, let's talk about premieres. I've tried premieres a couple times. Um, for me, I always forget that I'm premiering a video. Probably not my thing, but actually does get you a lot of watch time, which you need to get monetized. You can have a lot of viewers at once and you can chat with them in the chat. It's actually really fun. I might try and do them more often. And also live streams, that gets you a lot of watch time. I would live stream, but YouTube, I'm gonna slap you in the face. Literally, they won't let me. I've tried fixing the problem so many times. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, like it. If you didn't, dislike it. And if these tips help you, make sure you subscribe. See you later, peace toodles. <laughs>